ABBA what is Opus 10 about from ABBA? ABBA, band, what's the tale about the unreleased collection creation Opus 10? There was no such collection. In June 1981 a writer from Swedish paper Express and visited and talked with ABBA in the studio, while they were recording what might turn into the guest's collection, delivered in November 1981. The ensuing distributed story was named presently ABBA are recording their 10th opus. In the article, he stated will opus 10 currently beat them all? Essentially utilizing the traditional term will opus 10 currently beat them all? To allude to what he determined was ABBA's 10th collection, checking the past seven studio collections, in addition to two biggest hits volumes, delivered 1975 and 1979 backslash, yet dismissing the Spanish language Gracias por la Musica, 1980 backslash, meaning thank you for the music. Bits of gossip spread through ABBA fan circles that Opus 10 was the functioning title for the guest collection, and an instrumental demo recording, really named Not Tune Old Song, and later to become Song of Praise in the Anderson slash Rice slash Alveus Melody Chess 1984, recorded during the guest meetings and along these lines spilled on contraband tapes, was reputed to be the title track. A long time later the talk transformed into Opus 10 is the title of ABBA's temporary development to the guests for which six tracks were recorded in 1982 preceding ABBA deserted the collection, delivered the assemblage the singles, the initial 10 years, the singles the day before you came and enduring an onslaught, at that point took what they said was a break which got perpetual. The gossip turned out to be boundless to such an extent that it was remembered for some ABBA books, even in Agnetha's approved by O as I am. What enlivened the band, ABBA to compose the Spanish tune, Chiquitita? Well while well, not broadly acknowledged, ABBA really sang a bigger number of tunes in Spanish than they did in their own local language Swedish. The word Chiquito is a pet name for a lady signifying minimal one. In the early years, the tune had a few unique titles prior to being delivered in 1979. It was on the Spanish language collection named Gracias por la Musica meaning thank you for the music. After a 1974 visit to Spain and an appearance on a Spanish program, and Dante and Dante, the group perceived a colossal rewarding business sector for their music. They were at that point delivering tunes in different dialects, for example, English, German and French so Spanish was not an off-the-cuff decision. In 1979 at the idea of RCA Records in Argentina they started recording their melodies in Spanish delivering Chiquita without precedent for Spanish. It proceeded to turn into an immense hit in Argentina selling a large portion of 1 million duplicates in a couple of brief months. South America had found ABBA. In late 1979 they showed up on a few Spanish programs further hardening their success in Latin America. In mid-1980 a full Spanish collection named Gracias por la Musica, Thank You for the Music, was delivered and ABBA saw enormous achievement following. So ABBA was duly inspired by a huge market for their music and their colossal accomplishment with Spanish language tunes. The music saw a resurgence of sorts in the mid-1990s as another age found their music and the music lives on. An accumulation collection of their best Spanish tunes named ABBA Oro, Grandes Exitos was delivered in the mid-1990s. Is Dancing Queen the best ABBA tune? It's one of their best however they have so many. I believe it's one of their nine number one hits. I have consistently cherished ABBA. What red-blooded person wouldn't? Two dazzling young ladies singing their hearts out with those astonishing harmonies. In any case, as far as I might be concerned, indeed, it's their best. I thoroughly love this tune. There's an explanation I love this melody. My more established sisters, twins Laurie and Tracy, and I did a home film of the twins doing Dancing Queen lip matching up to it. It ended up being one of our best video melody home motion pictures and we did a lot of them. The young ladies additionally rehearsed this tune with my band and worked effectively on it. Their voices mixed so great, they seemed like Agnetha Foltzcock and Annie Friedling starred of ABBA. The two of them had extraordinary voices however Tracy was in every case too timid to even consider getting up in front of an audience. Laurie cherished it since she adored singing. 
At whatever point they came down to see my band when we were visiting the area and in the event that I wasn't visiting with another band, Laurie would come in front of an audience and do a tune. Probably the best tune was Child It's You by a band called Smith. Laurie sang it precisely like Gail McCormick, the lead vocalist of Smith. Thank you.